Okay, let's back up a little bit. Turning Point, Fall of Liberty. A first-person shooter developed by Spark Unlimited, a company founded by former developers from EA Los Angeles, the people behind the Medal of Honor franchise. The company only released five games before going defunct in May of 2015, releasing Call of Duty Finest Hour in 2004, then going all the way to their latest release, the game that I suspect had a lot to do with them going bust. Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z, an absolutely pathetic hack and slash that to this day is actually the most recent Ninja Gaiden. Sad, really. Lost Planet 3, the third game in the criminally underrated Lost Planet series, is definitely the weakest entry, and compared to 1 and 2, is very obviously not made in-house by Capcom. So, not an incredible track record so far, but since the second game they brought out in 2008 will be featured in my next video, I won't tell you what it is here. Instead, we shall focus on what they released in March of that year. Turning Point, Fall of Liberty. The game takes place in an alternative history scenario in which Winston Churchill dies in 1931, eight years before the start of World War II. Presenting the possibility of what could have happened to Europe, the United States, and the rest of the world without his leadership, in 1940, Neville Chamberlain surrenders to Germany, and the rest of Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East quickly follow. The United States, due to their isolationist nature, and because it's rife with anti-war sentiment at the time, does not get involved. But in 1953, Germany invades the eastern seaboard. This is where the game, Cold, opens. We assume the role of Dan Carson, a New York construction worker, atop an unfinished skyscraper as German fighters and bombers fly overhead. After climbing down the scaffolding, we make our way down into the collapsed building where you can clearly see I'm playing this game on a PS3. I am. Look, I have a copy right here. Earn your stars and stripes. Instructions for resistance. Citizens, register now. Want easy access to Nazi secrets? Call now and get instant access to unlimited ammo. Unlock all game levels. Or you just play it to the end. This is all pretty baffling considering I finished the entire game in under two hours. Yes, literally. That's how pathetically short this thing is. After making our way through and onto an overpass in between two buildings, we see a German paratrooper trying to get out of his parachute. The actual point of this is to show you that the game has these environmental kills that you can do in predetermined locations. Just a novelty considering the game's length, but good to see nonetheless. We then make our way onto a lift as it suddenly collapses. And we, um, survive. Right. Okay, sure then. Whatever. We have our first combat encounter and you can really see here that I'm struggling with using the controller for an FPS for the first time since like 2011. And yes, before you say, oh, why didn't you just play the PC version and use a mouse and keyboard? Well, I did try to, but no matter what I did, it wouldn't let me record in the proper resolution. Continuing onwards, we make our way to street level, where after some fighting, we get our first cutscene. You there! You! With the gun! We're setting up a counterattack! Hop in if you want to help! Scrubs, listen up. Name's Sergeant Callahan, National Guard. Now, I'm not keen on using untrained civilians, but the damn Nazis didn't give us much time to mobilize. And it looks like you can all handle yourselves just fine. We set up a barricade on 43rd. We need to hold this position so we can get the subway running again and evacuate as many civilians as possible. All right, everyone. There's some surplus equipment down on the subway there. Get geared up. So up next is a turret section. That's all this is, a turret section. Some tanks show up, and you have to disable them with this puzzle, but, uh, yeah, nothing really happens here, and nothing's on show apart from infinitely responding enemies and a collapsed Chrysler building. Wow, glad I escaped that game. Wait, there's more? Oh, no! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.
For the past two hours, our country has been at war. The cities of New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. have been the targets of attacks without warning by German forces. The death toll is not yet known. We have scattered reports of fighting all along the eastern seaboard. We are now being instructed by a unit of National Guardsmen to evacuate. Now, after some incredible frozen faces, what the fuck is that? We grab ourselves a 45 caliber lever action rifle, which seems to insta kill every enemy in sight. We make our way through the streets and into a subway station, the jank being very apparent walking up and down the stairs. We arrive on the platform where we are faced with what appear to be hell ghosts. And you can really tell how badly I was struggling using the controller here, but alas, we move on ahead and fight the seemingly endless amount of soldiers just chilling down here in the subway tunnel. We pick up a Huerer 48, which is just an updated Huerer 43, but this one has something called a Vampire Scope on it, essentially a mix between night vision and infrared, except that it doesn't matter in the slightest because the game just lets us see the enemy line of sight through solid objects. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. We clear out the subway carts and move back up to the street level. Why are we still here? We then meet up with some resistance and are asked to clear out the snipers across the street. After we do so, a blimp shows up. We grab a Panzer Schlag, 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 and take it out. We board a train heading for DC, and so ends the New York City section of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, you may find it safer to stay indoors in these times of turmoil. There are mounting reports of fighting between civilian insurgents and occupying German forces up and down the occupied East Coast. German propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels announced this morning that US President Thomas Dewey and Vice President Haley will be stepping down from office immediately. No reason was given. Speaker of the House James Edward Stevenson was sworn in as the new president shortly thereafter. In his first act in office, he announced America's surrender, calling for all American armed forces to stand down. Moments ago, we received word that General George Dunn, in defiance of Stevenson's orders, led a raid on the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., where Minister Goebbels was stationed. Donnelly was captured and faces charges of treason and possible execution. Perhaps Donnelly's actions will serve as a rallying cry to resistance forces still battling the Nazi occupiers. This is Lloyd Edwards, signing off. We then return to our protagonist in a DC apartment, where we can see a couple of Germans executing some civilians, after which a firefight breaks out. We take the guns our dead allies leave behind and head onto the roof. I clearly struggle to aim here and shoot an enemy who then falls off but gracefully stays in the air. We pick up a scoped FG-44 carbine with a very pleasing design, and then use another Panzerschlag to take out a tank on the road below. I then didn't know what to do as I tried to walk across the clothesline and fall to my death. I totally knew I had to use the ledge, shut up. We then dropped down to the ground floor and I called into an apartment building. We let through a locked door and the moment of peace is immediately interrupted by these two bozos in the alley. We cop a combat shotgun before I struggle once again, this time trying to get into an inaccessible window. I am stupid. I am stupid. We pass through the attic and by some rude dude. Hey, uh, remind me, who's the one holding the gun? Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Anyway, we drop down to find a couple of soldiers standing in the hallway. After disposing of them, I was shocked to see our friend here feeling the need to assert himself and show what he's made of. Hey, how you doing, love, mama? Let me whisper in your ear. I then get some poor guy killed because I can't aim to save a life apparently and just hit the ceiling instead. We continue fighting through the building and out into the streets, when we eventually end up at this loading dock area. Heading inside, it's given us a fairly obvious opportunity for an environmental kill but he seems to know we're here as he instantly turns around and starts blasting. We make quick work of him, and I swear I walked around this room for a good couple of minutes before I figured out which valve to turn to continue onwards. Doing so gets us to the barber shop and the truck that takes us to the courthouse where the resistance leader is being kept. Hilariously, this section only took about 8 minutes in total. We enter the courthouse basement, and the boys who brought us here get capped straight away. I then walk up some stairs to find this guy completely in his own world. Have you heard of the High Elves? 
We fight through another block of cells and into the courthouse itself. Open the door to where the general is being held. Ah, a new prisoner. Open and we go room to room as we shoot our way out. When we do get outside, we find a truck and make our escape. As you can tell from the lack of things I had to say about the short section, it wasn't very fleshed out, and so we move on to the next location, the White House. Former General George Donnelly is no longer in custody and claims he will continue to fight the foreign invaders. Donnelly charges that the German government has developed the prototype for a new type of doomsday weapon, an atom bomb capable of destroying an entire city with a single blast. German officials have refused to acknowledge the existence of the bomb and its scheduled testing on a major American city. Meanwhile, President Stevenson called Donnelly's charges, quote, ridiculous hearsay from a known traitor, but refused to comment on the weapon himself. That crop loving Stevenson. Third set this week, Angelo. Those boxes aren't free, you know. That jerk off ain't the president. Anyone here remember voting for him? Relax. That's why the general called this meeting. We're taking him down tonight. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. We're killing the president? Anyone got a problem with that? Hell no. You said it yourself, son. Nobody elected him. He's been a Nazi lapdog for years. Now then, I'm gonna need one demolitions team, three assault squads, two on suppression. Carson, you're the best shot. Make us proud. You should let mom drive. Maybe she won't hit all the potholes. <laughs> Shit, what the hell are they doing to the White House? Papers. Here we go, boys. Let's move. Dropping right into the action, there's somehow these bunkers that have been constructed outside of the White House. Don't know how they did that so quickly, but anyway. We fight our way through each bunker, moving from area to area. Kind of weird how it forces you to blow up the barricade, though, when they could simply jump down into the trench, but whatever. After clearing the third pillbox and shooting the machine gunner on the armored car, we, um... Right. We make it into the basement of the White House. We kick a guy into a furnace, clear out the rooms, and let our guys in. Hey Carson, where the hell you been? We then use the dumb waiter to get to the ground floor. Clear the main lobby and head into the hallway leading to the west wing, through the Rose Garden until we finally get to the Oval Office. No, don't shoot. Please, don't shoot. What is it you want? You're one of those resistance fighters, right? Listen. You could watch it all and listen to him go on until he draws his gun, or you could just, you know. Now the pretend president is dead, we can find our way out and escape. Angelo, how are you guys looking? Bombs are planted, of course. All right, everyone meet up at the front doors. Move! And so, we arrive in London. We make quick work of the combat arena and head down into the building. We kill a juggernaut looking guy holding an MG48 carbine, or what's really just a handheld MG42. We pick it up and head into the altar room, eliminating everyone in sight. After which I get quite confused and can't figure out how to proceed. Of course, it's a secret door in the wall. This is the Val situation all over again. Regardless, we take the elevator down into the laboratory, eventually stumbling upon a scientist who's willing to help out destroying the other two atomic bombs. 
They just took one of the prototypes. It's complete and fully functional. Do you understand? I'm a dead man as soon as they don't need me. I'll tell you how to destroy these two other bombs. Just help me get out of here. We disable them and head back up to the surface where the rest of the resistance join us. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? And the scientist opens an old escape route that leads to the bridge. Leads to the bridge. Carson, take the lead. Let's hope we can chase down that bomb. There's no way that Zeppelin is reaching New York. We've got to make sure of that. We exit the sewer and the final act of the game starts. About 80 minutes into it. I die straight away by being foolish enough to try and cross as the metal walkway collapsed. I then die again when trying to blow up the boat shooting at me, but third time's a charm and we get it done. Moving in, we shoot our way to the control room of the bridge itself, we pull the lever, and going up the elevator and climbing the ledges, we take out this poor sod and chuck him over the edge. <laughs> now we are tasked with boarding the Zeppelin, carrying the nuke meant for New York City, before it departs. We do so, and continue getting shot in the cutscene it seems? Huh. Alright, well, get ready for the most brutal kill in the game. Oh my god. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. Okay, we're on board the ship, and I gotta say, this next section inside this kind of garage type room is pretty tough. It took a couple of attempts, but as soon as I progress into the next room, I got distracted with an apple and the incredible, beautiful, sublime care put into the environment surrounding the aircraft. Right. Suck. We use the sniper and shotgun combination to fight our way through the hangar, open up the blast door, and move through the barracks to the cockpit of the ship. Before entering, though, there appears to be what looks like the script of the game displayed as scrolling text on a computer screen. Wow, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them. We kill everyone in the cockpit and enter the final room of the game. We pull the lever, flick the switch as enemies storm into the room. The bomb falls into the floor. We take him out and push the activation key on the central control panel. We drop our gun, sit down next to the nuclear device, the timer ticks down and the zeppelin goes up in an enormous blast. A mushroom cloud fills the sky above New York. But we did it. America is saved. Or is it? So, how do I feel about Turning Point? The mechanics are, albeit functional, extremely basic. Substantial efforts could have been made to not only increase the game's length, but also a way to put forward ideas that couldn't usually be explored in a traditional World War II setting. The large amount of glitches and bugs don't help either. You'd assume something so short and so static would be polished, but no. It all just comes together to create something that's a little sad, really. So in the end, I would give TPFOL a 3 out of 10. The concept may be intriguing, but that is exactly why it loses points for me, because it could have had so much potential. The other big issue is, of course, the runtime. At under two hours, it's not anything that even has the ability to get its claws into you and really create a gripping narrative. It's quite the shame to see an idea like this go to waste. I cannot help but have a soft spot for the B games of yesteryear, the forgotten, the abandoned, and sometimes even the hidden gems. We will be talking about all kinds of games in the upcoming videos, so with that, Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.